Welcome to Chopping Board Economics, where cooking brings economics alive. I'm Peter Omosi from the University of East Anglia. Join me for an episode of Everyday Economics, explained through some of my favourite recipes. Hi, do you know how much you spend on gas and electricity? Do you even know who your supplier is? If you have no idea, don't worry, you're not alone. In today's episode, we're going to look at searching and switching, all enwrapped in a story of your energy bill. On average, 4% of people's energy consumption relates to cooking, so the choice of your energy supplier affects even the cost of your food. Which is why today we're making a coconut roulade, something that requires no cooking whatsoever. But before we start, let's clear up a few things. Today the average UK energy bill is around £1300 per year per household. This is around 4% of total household expenses, but this proportion is much higher for the lowest income households. So energy is a large chunk of our monthly expenses. This would suggest that we're quite savvy about our energy spending, right? Well, maybe not so much. Various surveys show that more than half of all consumers have not changed supplier in the last three years or more, and almost half the consumers don't even understand their own energy bills. Sounds quite striking. Just imagine you do your weekly shopping and have no idea how much you spend on each item, or you don't know how much your favourite recipe costs you or what the ingredients are. That would never happen, right? Hopefully not. In any case, at least we do know exactly what ingredients we need for our coconut rolls. These coconut rolls are really versatile, so feel free to deviate from my ingredients. Today, for the dough, I'm using 500 grams of digestive biscuits, 100 grams of icing sugar, 40 grams of cocoa powder, two tablespoons of jam, any jam will do, some milk and some rum or rum essence. For the filling, I have 200 grams of desiccated coconut, 100 grams of icing sugar, 150 grams of butter, some cream and some vanilla essence. Now if you haven't got some of these ingredients at home, don't worry, let's go and buy them. Let's start with butter. You go to a supermarket and find the butter you always buy for £2.20. Will you buy it or search for a better deal? Economic theory assumes that people make rational decisions about searching for good deals. So according to theory, you would instantaneously assess that it costs 50p to drive to the next supermarket and because you don't think that they have the same butter for less than £1.70, you decide not to search, just buy the old product. Now say that you do your shopping online and find that butter costs £2.10 at the other supermarket. Searching in this case doesn't cost anything extra, so economic theory would assume that people would switch to the other butter. But will they? Well that depends on something called switching cost. Say that you want to buy your butter from a different online retailer but there's a sign up fee of £5. That's a switching cost. Moreover, there are other non-monetary switching costs. For example, you need some cocoa for your coconut roll. You know you need 50 grams of the brand that you've been using. Then you find that there's another brand, but you don't know whether the same 50 grand is the right measure. To find out, you need to experiment and learn, and that's another switching cost. Why are switching costs so important? Well, economists believe that people get the best deals where businesses compete for their consumers. But if switching costs are high and people don't switch, it is as if there was no competition and we would miss out on all the benefits. So according to theory, if someone tells you that you can save £200 a year on your energy bill by switching supplier, it seems obvious that you should switch. So do we really switch energy suppliers? Well, we'll see. But first of all, why don't we look at how to make these coconut rolls? First of all, wrap the biscuits into a kitchen towel and bash them into fine crumbs. Put in a bowl, add the cocoa, the sugar, the rum and mix it with the jam. Add enough milk to form a damp dough that comes together. Put it on the side 
to make the filling, beat the butter with the icing sugar, the vanilla and some cream until frothy. Add the coconut and mix it all together. Now spread out the dough on some cling film, spread the filling on the top and roll up very tightly using the cling film. When rolled up, pat it all together to make sure it's very firm and put it in the fridge for a couple of hours before serving. Making a non-baked dessert can be a conscious effort to reduce your energy bills. But when it comes to your energy bills, how much does money really matter? Let's see. Professor Wadhams has researched consumer behavior in the energy market for many years. Her team was able to observe and analyze the decisions which consumers made when offered a better deal. In 2012, consumers were invited to join the Big Switch, a large collective energy switching exercise conducted in the UK. In this exercise, an auction was held where energy providers could bid to offer the best deal to consumers. Information about the participants' energy consumption was passed on anonymously to the companies who were bidding in the auction. After the auction, each participant received a personalised offer from the supplier who had won the auction. And if a cheaper deal was available from another company, then the consumer was shown that deal as well. The idea in this experiment was to ensure that participants didn't have to search to find the best deal and that there was very little or no extra trouble to actually switch. Plus, participants actively opted in to take part in the auction, so one would have expected them to be ready to switch. So did they switch? We were surprised to find that only just over a quarter of those who were offered savings actually accepted the offer. Even for savings of over £300 a year, fewer than half actually switched for that offer. So it appears that consumers are not moving to the better deals. Why is this a problem? Because without switching, it is as if energy suppliers weren't competing and non-switching consumers miss out on good deals and innovative products. As a result, in the UK, less than half the people enjoy competitive prices and a majority who don't switch pay higher energy bills. The government's response to this? They made a pledge in 2017 to cap the price of energy bills. Professor Wadhams explains why this might be a problem. A cap would lower the price for the non-switching consumers, but by reducing competition, it would also increase the price paid by those consumers who are active in the market now. Moreover, higher average prices will be felt most keenly by low-income households who already spend a much higher proportion of their incomes on energy. A better solution suggested by Professor Wadhams' team would be to hold an auction to supply the sticky customers where energy suppliers would be invited to make a better offer to them as a group. This would provide a potentially better deal for the disengaged whilst harnessing the true power of competition. There are many areas of life that show that people aren't as rational as economic theory likes to think, but that should not be used to justify badly designed policies such as an energy price cap which could leave many especially the poorest, worse off. Right, it's time to take our roll out of the fridge, sprinkle it with the leftover coconut and serve it sliced. Make sure to wrap it back up to avoid it drying out. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Stay tuned for more chopping board economics.